And now, if you don't mind, I want to talk about the BMW M5. You see, what we have here are two cars. One of them is a spacious, practical four-door saloon. The other is a blistering, growling monster. For 24 years, this has been the ultimate sports saloon. But now, there is a new jag. <laughs> The new XFR doesn't look much like a blistering, growling monster. There are no bulges in its flanks. There are no scoops. There's no Cheshireishness at all. It looks like it might even be a diesel. It's the same story on the inside. Sitting in an M5 is like actually sitting in a laptop. It couldn't be more geeky even if the sat-nav voice was Buffy. In the Jag, though, all I've got is a steering wheel and some pedals. It even has an automatic gearbox. Don't be fooled by the plain Jane simplicity, though, because the speed of this thing is simply unbelievable. Right, that is not to 60 in four and a half seconds, and look at it, 80, 90, 100, 110, 150. It's supposed to be limited to 155, but look, 165, and it's still accelerating. That's unbelievable. What's it limited by? If you don't stick to 155, I shall jolly well write to the Daily Telegraph about it. The key to this rampant savagery is an all-new, all-Welsh, supercharged 5-litre V8 engine. There's no other word. It's fantastic. And there's more good news. At £60,000, the Jag is noticeably cheaper than an M5. It's also quieter, and it's way more comfortable. It is uncannily comfortable. It's so soft and so absorbent, it's like sitting on a fat dog. You can't really believe it'll go around a corner at all, leave alone like this. <laughs> I'm doing that wearing brogues. Perfect, even when you're driving like a complete lunatic. <laughs> so easy. So, this is two cars as well. It's amazingly comfortable and quiet when you're not in the mood for fun and games. And it's savagely fast. But can it really be as fast as an M5? Let's find out. Both cars produce as near as makes no difference 500 horsepower, and both weigh about the same. There are some differences, of course. He can rev to 8,000, I can only rev to six and a half. He's got 10 cylinders, I've only got eight. He's got seven speeds in his gearbox, I've only got six. But I have 80 more torques than him. 80! I've got so much torque, I could tear a hole in time! Better brakes, but coming out of the corner, I'm going to unleash my meteorite of torque, and here we go! This is getting hot, hard, and dangerous now. I need to stay cool. There's the aircon.
I'm not for a moment going to suggest that this is better than an M5. But it's as good as. And praise doesn't get higher than that. <laughs> On the track, the Jag is as good as a BMW. Mm, nearly. On the road? Honestly, I think this, on the road it's better. But I'll tell you what we'll do now, we'll put some maths into the mix because we'll find out how fast it goes around our track. And that of course means handing it over to our tame racing driver. Some say he has 12 GCSEs, all in domestic science. <laughs> and that he's been producing artificial sperm for years, <laughs> even though we have repeatedly asked him not to. <laughs> All we know is he's called the Steg. He's off. 503 Welsh horsepowers charging him down to the first corner. This is still a two-ton car, so let's see how it battles the laws of physics here. Looking nice so far. Second to last corner. More oversteer and up to Gambon. Wonder what'll happen here. Yep, there goes the top of the road. And across the line. Now, here we are, look. BMW M5 126.2. Now, I expected the Jag to be a little bit slower than that. And it was. Unfortunately, <laughs> just half a second in it. But look at it this way. If you have an XFR, do you know, I've lost my wallet. You never have to pay for anything. 